But what laptop I'm talking about is this old school Dell one. So this is a first generation i7. But when you're looking at the laptop, the condition, it's okay. So at the top, it's more having this rubber compound. You know, you can see those things on controllers. I really hate this. And this is exactly the reason why, because it's always getting sticky. The power supply was not the original one and it will give an error when booting it up. So, but when you're looking at the laptop itself, it's quite of a big beast. The display itself works just fine. The thing also comes with a lot of extra features, some great audio, you'll later see in the video what I mean with that. But let's talk about the connection and what can we do with it and clean it up. So first of all, let's remove the dust. That's the only thing I can do for now. Maybe get some aggressive cleaning to get this rubber compound off, but it's something I will do in a different video. Then we're going to get the HDMI out and VGA out, Ethernet connection. We're going to get a couple of USB ports and then we're going to get a microphone and two, quite interesting, two headphone ports. And the right side, we're going to get another USB, the input for the power supply and the on and off switch. But okay, so the laptop itself is not in the best condition, I already mentioned a couple of times, but how is it the inside? It's just okay. It's quite filthy, but it's okay. But okay, so... I was surprised to see when I was opening up, nothing was in here. So what I'm guessing is the following thing. They wanted to get rid of this laptop because it has some issues with the RAM. That happens a lot. And when the RAM is like faulty, we're going to get some weird blue screens or basically it just gets frozen in the middle of operation. And so I got myself some used memory banks, DDR3, the ones that need to be in here. In total, 16 gigabytes. So we're going to have more than enough for also installing Windows if we want to. There was no hard drive, I completely understand they always remove those for maybe backuping the files, stuff like that. Or maybe they were naughty. So the next thing that we need to do with Balashira is downloading the image. Because we're going to get a lot of different versions, take into consideration with this we're going to need the x64 edition. If we're going to use this on a very old one, there is even like an image for everything, including old school retro PCs. Think about the Windows XP era. So Balashewa is a very interesting piece of software that we can use on many different platforms, as you can see over here. But okay, so the first thing that you need to do is download the image and make yourself a hard drive, USB stick. But let's talk about the first, what ways you can go. Because that is the interesting thing about Balashewa and the way how you're going to use it. Okay, so what I mean with using it, there are basically four and more ways to do so. To begin with, we're going to use a 2.5 inch drive. What you can do basically is get yourself an SSD, you, depending on what you want to install on the Bodocera image. SSD are getting affordable, especially like the 512 gigabytes, but if you're going to get one tera and above that, it's going to be very expensive. So that's something you need to take into consideration or just use yourself a normal platter disk. These things are dirty cheap nowadays, so you can get yourself a two terabyte for not a lot of money and you can slap a lot of files on your Bodocera image. So that's something you just need to take into consideration for yourself, which way you want to go. Then we're going to get the thumb drive. The downside to my laptop I'm using now only got the USB 2.0. So the 3.0 stick I'm owning here is not going to get the full potential and full speed. So loading times will be significant longer and it's not something I recommend doing in this case. You can always get yourself a bigger hard drive, but hard drive like this will not fit the laptop. So you need to have an external closure. And again, we're going to get the same problem that we cannot use it with 3.0. So we're going to get lower speed through the USB. So not convenient. Okay, nowadays we're going to get this plug and play kits. Uh, yeah, take consideration if you're going to get yourself like an enclosure with a hard drive. Same problem. We don't have the fast speed for it. So I think the best thing is just build yourself inside the machine itself. Because using 2.0 with a USB drive, nope. So what we're going to do, we're going to use ourselves a platter disk because they're dearly cheap, 2 terabyte, and we're going to use, of course, the bracket that was missing with this too, because also that was missing. And we're going to slap in this hard drive. Barcera has been set up on the disk itself. And let's see how far we can push this i7. But before we can do that, let's do a little bit of a nerdy time and let's talk about the specs, what we're actually going to get with this laptop. Okay guys, so let's take a close look at the specifications. The brand is Dell, type the PP39L. The CPU is an i7-740QM that has a clock speed of 1.73 GHz, 16GB of DDR3, monitor is 15.6 inches, and we got a resolution of 1366 by 768 Okie dokie, everything I've been set up, I'm going to use myself the Xbox 360 controller because I already have been set up with my Bodas Sera image. I really love this controller because it's a good compatible with many different systems. Okay, so the monitor itself, it's a normal resolution, like not full HD. It's going to be like an old school one, 
but it looks still very nice in combination with the sound it's going to be freaking fantastic i think even for this old laptop it is an i7 the first generation but i'm curious how far we can push it so don't expect playstation 3 emulation that is something that will not happen on old specs like this but i think this is just a really cool i say all one solution Okay, next up, let's try the Atomos Wave. This system doesn't run on cheap Android boxes. So I think about Super Console League, stuff like that, it costs around $100. And we can play it without any problem on this old school laptop. Another system that runs pretty good is MAME with Killer Instinct. And Raspberry Pi 4 has a lot of issues running this, but an old school laptop has no problem whatsoever. Okay guys, so when it comes to N64, we're going to get quite a good performance, especially when you compare it with $100 game boxes from AliExpress. So I was surprised to see that N64 was pretty damn good on this device. So basically with an old CPU like this, we're going to very quickly reaching the ceiling with this, with emulation performance. But I must say, surprisingly, GameCube runs pretty good. Like, not all the games, but a lot of games run pretty good. I can really enjoy this. But sadly, when it comes to Sega Saturn, then we're going to get again a bottleneck because this game doesn't run that great. Three-dimensional Sega Saturn games with the Yabba Sensido, you need to have quite a lot of power nowadays to run these systems. Yes, yeah, and this old CPU i7 is not powerful enough. But there is a bright side because if you're going to play some two-dimensional games, then we're going to get better performance. Okay guys, so next up, Sega Dreamcast. This system runs pretty damn good on this i7. I must say the performance are quite nice. And if you're going to combine it with better emulators, I think you can even upscale it a little bit than the native resolution. Okay, next up, PlayStation 2, and sadly not all the games run perfectly, and the main problem is just we don't have enough power for this. So take consideration, two-dimensional games, same like with Sega Saturn, will run just okay, and will have better performance. But in the end, it's going to be a mixed bag. But what is pretty damn awesome that PlayStation Portable is running very well on this laptop and looks amazing. And maybe you can even upscale it a little bit more. More than many games like God of War will have some struggles. And I mean like you will run it on two times resolution. But it's very demanding. And even with this i7 first generation it's not powerful enough in my opinion. But yeah guys you can maybe find these laptops for cheap. And I think it's a pretty damn cool thing to do if you want to modify them into a portable retro emulation beast. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family. Let me know what you think of this project and it would be great to see you in the next video.